So, time to start using the product viewer template. So, launch Unreal Engine, Unreal Studio. That's step one. And we're going to use it this time with our own model. So, not with the sample, but we're going to use our own model. So, we need a new project. We don't care about the name now. And it's going to load this project with all the gears in there, the transmission parts. So, launching. And then I'll show you the steps you need to take to get your own model into this template. So you have your own VR HTC Vive interactive experience. Um, so step one, import your model. And this one is in downloads. It's here, it's a wooden shelter for in the garden, a rhino file. I'm gonna put it in this directory. So this is directory structure. I'm just gonna import it. and just gonna use the default settings. So here we're launching it. It's now reading the native Rhino 3DM file format and it will import it into Unreal inside this template. And once it's in, I'll show you what you need to do to get it working and what is working now and what isn't working yet when you do the default import. So let's give it a minute, a little bit less. It's not a huge model, so it doesn't take too long want to import it so you can see the whole process. So there it is, it's now imported and it is imported like shelter root and then there's a part which is another root which is a subdirectory which holds all the meshes. So that's what has been imported and now let me show you what we need to do. First of all, let me lower the floor a little bit because there's a seating arrangement down here which we want to see as well inside our experience. I want to change this material to a two-sided material. So let me do that as well because the curtains are single faces. So we just tick this box and apply it. And once done, it will update the model and it has now two-sided material here on the curtains. So now let me show you what is happening. So if I play it, this is still working of course. Our model has been brought in to the template, but it's not interacting with the logic with all the, like it's doing here with the all these kind of things, they don't work for our model yet. And that makes sense because we haven't added our model to the logic. So let's do that. So stop this. And what we need to do is, uh, first of all, we don't need this mesh. It will distract us. We don't need all the transmission parts. It will distract us as well. And don't throw away the product viewer collector because that one is really important. So delete it. Now go to your product viewer collector and check down here in the product viewer rollout, this one, interactive route, open it. It is now pointing to the interactive route of the transmission part, which was that one. So we need it to point to our own, so to the shelter. Once that's done and you play it, start, you can see it lights now up. It's already interacting with our cursor. And the only thing it doesn't do yet is if we select something, we can't move it. And that also makes sense because we haven't changed that. So let's go back. These things, so all the meshes, all the actors, they are set to static. So they need to be set to movable. Once they're set to movable, you can interact with them. So let's all select all of them. All the way to the bottom down here all of them we change them all to movable quick and dirty and we press play again so play now you can see the highlights and you can see they are now able to move so now the whole thing works as it did with the other one so you can apply the x-ray format you can fly around you can move around you can zoom in you can zoom out you can do all these things and work in this way. So final thing which I want to do is there's a post-processing volume which came with the template and of course that was sized around the transmission and we need to size it around our new object. So let's scale this one 
post-processing scale it, let's say 8 by 5 and 5. So now it's surrounding our model and for instance if we change it, let's see, maybe we can do something with the white balance just to show it. Let's make it really blue. Let's play. <coughs> and now you can see it is inside the post-processing volume so it's all blue now. So that was it. So that's all you need to do. You need to get your post-processing post -processing volume around the model you imported. You need to import your model down here. You need to make sure that your product viewer collector is set as an interactive route to the root of your hierarchy of what you've imported and then it will start interacting with your mouse or cursor or with the controllers you got for your HTC depending on the output you choose for either the um, let's say HTC Vive or your desktop experience and that's it so it takes about two minutes in total just to get this kind of experience done next part will be changing this thing for instance so you know how you can make it a little bit more customized to your own preferences maybe fool around a little bit with the post-processing volume and probably add something like a menu of your own so you can change some stuff and that's about it done